This is the new AC200 Max, Bluetti's flagship portable power station. I've had this unit on test for just over a week now. It's an evolution of the AC200P, which I've used extensively and which I'll link to in the description. The AC200 Max will launch tomorrow, Tuesday the 12th of April at 11 a.m. Sydney time. This is important because if you want one, the first 200 units are going to be offered at a heavily discounted $2,599. That's a strict limit, Bluetti tells me. After those first 200 units are gone, the price will revert to the undiscounted recommended retail price of $2,999. So if you want 400 bucks off, mark that 11 a.m. launch promo price in your calendar and get your mouse hand limbered up early. There's a link in the description and pinned to the comments below as well. Now, having just tested it, I am a huge fan of this product. And yes, Bluetti did send it to me for free to review. No, they're not getting any input into what I say about it. And yes... I will earn a small commission if you use the link in the description. And no, that does not cost you any extra. This review is in three parts, okay? What does the AC200 Max actually do? Who is it right for? And lastly, a field test. I'm going to drive a bunch of power-hungry tools here in the Fat Cave using just the Blue Eddy and see if it'll support one man's simple but noble quest to be a madman of metal manipulating mayhem. Perhaps if the power goes down, I don't know, following a flood or a fire or a pandemic, I think we can all relate to that in some small way by now. <laughs> Inside the case is a somewhat hefty lithium iron phosphate battery pack, 2048 watt hours. That's actually bigger than the battery in a Toyota RAV4 hybrid, and the battery tech in the Bluetti itself is somewhat more advanced. The battery forms the foundation of what this unit can do. Let's put it in perspective, okay? This is this is an 18 volt, 4 amp hour power tool battery. Lithium ion chemistry, there's a bunch of probably 18650 cells inside, spot welded together. And if you get your hands on the tools from time to time, you will know how much work one of these can do, right? How many screws it will drive in, how many holes it'll drill, etc. How much sweat it saves you. That is 72 watt hours of energy. That's 18 volts times 4 amp hours equals 72 watt hours, right? The battery in the AC200 Max is about 28 of those batteries equivalent, sort of just in terms of the energy that's on board. And it is tremendously versatile on the output side you get four standard household power outlets, GPOs more or less, plus four USB-A plugs for electronic devices and a 100 watt high power USB-C that is just crying out to energize a dying laptop. There's 12 volts DC out as well. You get a Siggy lighter port, a 30 amp super DC port and two 10 amp outlets plus inductive charge pads on top 15 watts a piece there enough for two devices total power output of this unit is 2200 watts which is huge and you can use all of the ports at the same time like all of the output ports at once if you want or obviously as many as you need surge protection for devices that are especially thirsty when they sort of kick on, such as fridges and angle grinders, is 4,800 watts. So you don't have to worry about it being especially trip happy. And I'm going to test it in a minute. You can see all of that cranking, turning and burning, whatever, even though there's no moving parts. You can charge it up pretty fast too. 
the maximum power in of AC plus solar is 1300 watts. It comes with a 400 watt AC charging brick, which means you'll go from dead flat to full easily while you sleep. Or you can put up to 900 watts of solar into it as you use it, provided the sun is shining. So even if you are drawing the maximum 2200 watts out of the unit, let's say you buy two of Bluetti's SP350 solar panels, right? They're 350 watts a piece, so you'll be making a total of 700 watts, provided the big fusion furnace in the sky is deciding to play ball. You've got 700 watts in and 2,200 coming out, so the depletion of the battery is going to be reduced to something like 1,500 watts. Or if you look at this another way, rocking like that with the 700 watts in, you'll get basically indefinite 240 volts AC out with the sun shining if you limit the average current draw to about 700 watts, which is nearly one horsepower. So it's hardly like a trickle coming out, right? If you're using it to work on site using some powerful machine, big drill press or a saw or something, let's call it 1.5 kilowatts, okay? And you're using that device one third of the time, like you do, right? Because the other two thirds you'll be marking out or you'll be moving the stock in or out or you'll be installing what you just cut up. Then that's only 500 watts on average over time, even though the unit itself, like the tool you are using, is 1500 watts, you're only using it a third of the time, okay? The AC power that comes out of these things is the pure sine wave kind too. So it's just right for sensitive electronics like televisions and things of that nature, right? If you're a grey nomad and you want that nice TV signal without any of those ghosting kind of artifacts that goes with the modified square wave kind of cheap inverter conversion, right? This thing uses a high quality inverter. The power that comes out is just like the stuff that comes out of the PowerPoint. And if 2048 watt hours is not enough electricity for you, that's what's inside the box, right? But if that's not enough for you, you can buy these extra B230 battery expansion packs from Blue Eddy, each of which will add an additional 2048 watt hours, and that'll build you a modular battery system with up to 8.2 kilowatt hours of onboard energy. That's heaps. It's hard actually imagining a person needing more than that for the vast majority of remote power applications. So the one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to sit here and tell you that these things are cheap. They're not. They're a high quality product and also a considerable investment. So if you're thinking about this kind of thing, careful consideration is required before you jump on in. And the way I see it, how about you see how many of these boxes you tick? Is a power failure likely for you at home? And do you need to keep essential or desirable devices just humming along in the background while the electricity dudes sort out the defect back at the substation or the big tree that's just fallen down over the poles and wires inconveniently, right? Do you need the power while that's going on? Do you go camping in your 4x4? Are you a tradie and do you need power out there somewhere without mains power? Do you need power like that for a caravan or a boat? Are you likely to have to fire up some 240 volt tools at a remote location, such as if you are building a shed in the back paddock or the weekend getaway kind of thing, right? Because the AC200 Max is going to do all of that. And to me, the real advantage lies in the fact that it's not one of these hardwired installations in your 4x4, which demands another installation in the boat, right? The AC200 Max is going to go seamlessly from your work ute Monday to Friday to your family 4x4 at the weekends 
and it's about as big as a small 12 volt fridge kind of thing. So it's not gonna take up too much space in the four wheel drive, the boat or the caravan, right? Also, you don't have to drill any holes in bulkheads and body panels and this is always a factor at resale time. If you strip this kind of thing out, it's gonna look dodgy. The AC200 Max is pretty heavy though, at 28 kilos, which is just over 60 pounds of the old money. But hey, dude, batteries are heavy. Mass is the price you pay for having all of that energy to play with. And, you know, if you've got to run uphill with it, just cancel your gym membership because you won't be needing that anymore. And let's talk about power failure at home kind of thing, right? Fridge full of food, high quality food. Just before Easter, the rellos are all due or something, right? A modern refrigerator probably draws about, I don't know, 360 watts with, let's call it a 30%-ish duty cycle. So the AC200 Max is probably going to keep a fridge cool for about 17 or 18 hours on a full charge, or pretty much indefinitely with those two 350-watt solar panels connected, provided the sun plays ball. Okay, so to do a realistic test of the AC200 Max, I guess I could have just filled the fridge with Verve Clicquot and then lubricated myself pleasantly for the next 12 to 18 hours or something, or until the lights went out. Attractive proposition, therapeutic even, but sadly, not that visually compelling. Instead, I went into metal manipulating mayhem madman mode momentarily. I started with a full AC200 Max, right, with a battery at 100%. And first thing, I charged up a four amp hour power tool battery because I'll be needing that later, right? All the machining operations you see here are gonna be done on Bluetti portable power alone. The lights and the fan in the fat cave are running on the mains, however, just so we know what's driving what. Today's objective, I'm making a plate for mounting the world's cheapest cast iron swivel vise on the bench along the side wall. Pretty straightforward stuff, okay, but without mains power. So I marked out the plate and I center popped the 14 holes. And then I rounded over the corners because elegance is my middle name, obviously. I did the bulk of the corner waste. I handled that with Satan shears first, just to extend the life of the abrasives, right? It's not a bad idea to do bulk removal before you start with the abrasive. And yeah, before you say it, I do need a more rigid bench for the shears. Dude, fat caves are inevitably a work in progress, right? They always are. I finished the corners off using the sanding disc linishing attachment on my main 200 millimeter bench grinder. The Bluetti drove that, no problem. And I deburred the outside with a file and an old sanding disc. And I think it's always good not to lose sight of the fact that sometimes elbow grease is actually the most efficient option. And then I cranked up the drill press, like the big one. It's a 2.4 horsepower, which is 1.5 kilowatt single phase machine. 240 volts at eight amps nominally. I didn't know how the AC200 Max would cope with the startup load on that machine because it does have three pulleys and two belts to get from the motor to the quill, but it was fine, like seamless. So I decided to drill the four holes that I was going to tap for M12 by 1.75 first. They're the ones I'm going to use to hold the vise to the plate using M12 socket head cap screws. And I expertly drilled the wrong friggin' hole straight out of the gate. You fuckwit. Yes, like a rank amateur in front of witnesses, including you. Of oh, friggin' course. So... My official story, henceforth, is this is an excellent opportunity to add drama to this fine production and see if the AC200 Max is going to drive a welder. <laughs> Frankly, I wasn't that hopeful because the welder here is a Lincoln Electric 180C power MIG with a 15 amp plug 
which implies that it has the capacity to draw more than 2.4 kVA potentially. So I used a slow wire speed and I kind of snuck the volts up as high as I could. And I did trip the AC200 Max a few times during this process, but that's easy to clear and it just boots up again. And I just dropped the volts back to the point where it had run a bead more or less okay. And I went with short runs to fill the hole. The bar under the plate is a piece of aluminium stock, just an offcut, right? It stops the weld metal from falling straight through like a big drip. It helps it freeze fast because aluminium is an excellent conductor, like a heat sink. And it stops me from welding the frigging plate to the table, which is kind of a neat trick. If you are ever as dumb as me and make a mistake like that, like, I mean, make the story even better by showing you how you can actually weld with the AC200 Max, just like, if you are ever as dumb as me, remember the aluminium trick for filling up holes because it's awesome. That welder was driving 035 flux cord wire, which is 0.9 of a millimetre. And I suspect that if I drop the setup back to 030 diameter wire, which is 0.8 millimetres, it would have made the AC200 Max a whole lot happier driving it, right? But I just couldn't be asked doing that for one hole, right? And ultimately, it got the job done. I wouldn't be planning on welding up a trailer using the Blue Eddy, but if you run a rally car or something and you're out in the boonies and you need to do a bit of light fabrication work, bit of panel repair or something on location, then yeah, dude, that is definitely doable. And then I just used a flap disc on a 125 millimeter angle grinder to smooth things over there and the Blue Eddy ran that just fine. And despite losing half an hour of my life that I will never get back because I was multitasking and not really paying attention to the core cool business, I got back to drilling. This time with the holes in the right place, amazingly enough. All up, there are 10 clearance holes in the plate. They're seven millimeters each. That's for the mounting screws, which hold the plate to the bench and four holes for the vise, which are drilled at 10.2 millimeters, which is the tapping size for M12 by 1.75. The easiest way to mark out those four holes is to use the vise itself as a template and grab yourself a trusty transfer punch set. There's no measuring, plus it ensures that those holes will be concentric, as opposed to just winging it with a felt tip marker, which is always preposterously dodgy. If you want to do the drilling and tapping thing, a 10.2 millimeter drill is a fairly esoteric thing, really. At least it is in the context of Bunnings. So go over to Ames Industrial. I'll put a link for the drill and the tap in the description. You'll be tapping like a 15 year old before you know it. Okay, eight millimeters of plate thickness. Now well, that's gonna give me more than four threads of engagement for each one of those cap screws. And I'll be using four high tensile M12 socket head cap screws to hold the vise to the plate, which is just gonna look a bit neater than conventional hex head set screws, which you might think of as bolts, notionally. So I deburred all of the holes using a handheld drill and a countersink bit powered by the battery, which the Blue Eddy just charged up. And then I switched to a mag drill to countersink the 10 mounting holes. And I could have obviously done that on the drill press, but the mag drill is fun to use and also a pretty good test for the Blue Eddy, seeing as it has to drive the magnet, which delivers about 1.2 to 1.3 tons of clamping force when it's energized, as well as providing the power to remove the metal via the bit. These things use a welded shank inside the quill, which delivers incredibly positive drive and it does that by locating the bit using two set screws and a flat and they clamp onto the shank of the bit and they make it basically immovable right they can also drive these neat things called annular cutters which are essentially precision ground hole saws designed to make really big holes in thick steel fast. Mag drills are flat out awesome and it's great to know that you can drive one remotely out in the boonies using the AC200 Max. 
And then I just had to tap the four holes for the set screws, and that was all down to that Latin dude, Manuel Labor, for that one. I'm not set up for power tapping, sadly. The tapping jig you can see in these shots is a great way to ensure that the tap goes in reasonably square to the face. It's a magnetic base too, and a tap wrench and a guide block all in one. And all that was left then was to mount the plate to the bench with a hex driver using the battery charged up earlier and screw down the vise with a 10 millimeter Allen wrench. Overall, I'm really happy with how that turned out. There's a slight boost to fat cave functionality, which is essentially what one should aspire to every time one sets foot in one's own fat cave, in my view, at the risk of sounding like friggin' Yoda. In case you were wondering, the reason for using the plate is it's dead easy to drill and tap for other benchtop devices, even ones that you do not yet own, because you can do it retrospectively, especially if you've got a mag drill, right? If your fat cave space is limited, you can run a vise and a bench grinder and a bar bender and whatever else you want off just the one plate. And you just need one Allen wrench to swap out all of those different components. At the end of all of this, grinding the four corners, drilling the 15 holes, including my brilliantly contrived mistake, which I really just did to cleverly demonstrate some Bluetti-enabled off-grid welding. Obviously. Plus the angle grinder, cutting those 14 countersinks with the mag drill and charging up the power tool battery, the Bluetti AC200 Max still had 73% of its total charge remaining. I'd only used about a quarter of its capacity, in other words. So you could make another three of those plates, which is kind of a day's work, before fading to black. I think it's fair to say, however, that you would probably be exhausted before it would be, at least in many fat cave fabrication scenarios. My impression of this is the AC200 Max is a keeper, dude. It's versatile and very grunty. I'm yet to try out the solar panels because the weather, frankly, has not been kind in that regard lately. But perhaps things will look up and we can all get back to worrying about melanoma directly. Dude, don't forget the 400 bucks off, right? 11 a.m. tomorrow, April the 12th. Link in the description. Thank you very much for watching.